Okay guys, let's go through the KK2 tuning guide. Um, first thing you want to do after installation is confirm that you're uh, trimmed out. The way you do that is you make sure to bind up your receiver, turn on your transmitter, make sure your primary trims are set to center, and then what I recommend doing is going into the receiver test mode and then you'll get into this screen. This screen is basically going to give you a numerical value for what your sticks are telling the board. So what you need to do is if you're not seeing all zeros, um, except for the, the auxiliary channel, don't worry about the auxiliary channel quite yet, but um, you want to set everything to zero. So I recommend doing that in sub trims so you have full access to the, um, to the main trims. So go into your sub trims and dial those in until you see all zero on your primary control channels. From there you can go through and start tuning. Okay guys, let's go through the tuning process. Uh, first of all, I want you guys to turn off your height dampening. Um, that feature is pretty cool, but it, it can screw this up a little bit. So turn your height dampening off and play with it at a future date. Um, here's the stock settings on a hexcopter. The stock settings on a hexcopter are um, actually okay, but I've found that on quads and on tries it's going to be too sensitive. So if you're on a quad or a tri, I recommend turning those settings down. All of these tests are basically going to be done with the stock limits set for the P and the I gain. So the P is going to be set at 100 and the I is going to be set at 20 in the limits. Um, that's generally the way you're going to run with it the entire time. The limit is, um, you can look at it almost as a travel adjustment. It basically allows the motor to give more or less power to compensate for, um, for drift or for rotation. So consider the limit basically as a travel adjustment. Um, also, when you first start off tuning, turn your eye gain all the way to zero. Go without any eye gain, try to dial it in on your P gain first, and then once you have your P gain dialed in, you dial in your eye gain. The way to tell when you're dialed in is uh, P gain only you'll eventually see oscillations and it will do it on its own. Right? It's not when you touch the stick and let go. Um, you'll see high speed oscillations. And once you hit that point you need to dial it back down until you have no oscillations. Um, also if you fly in a lot of wind you want to try to dial it down a little bit more otherwise you'll get um, even more oscillations when there's a lot of uh, moving air. So once you get that P gain dialed in move on to your I gain and bump your eye gain until you get a low speed oscillation then you dial that down. Um, I'll show you examples of the high speed oscillation in the P gain and the low speed oscillation in the I gain. So it's really pretty simple just like tuning a regular KK board or a multi Wii board. You tune your P gain first then you bring your eye gain up. Um, here are the examples of the P gain oscillation on a quad. It shows up much better on a quad than um, a hex or an octa. There you go, you can see it bouncing around. Pretty obvious. Also becomes very, very difficult to uh, maintain your altitude. It tends to jump up and down. It's, uh, it's just a nightmare to fly. That's when you know it's too high. That was at about 120. Um, this is my uh, eye gain oscillation totally different, much slower, and that was at about 100. This ended up flying at around um, 40 P gain, 45 P gain, and uh, 60 I gain. So uh, I hope the video helped you out. I know it's fairly brief, fairly simple, but I don't want to overwhelm you with too much detail. So um, please subscribe and uh, thumbs up the video if it helped you out at all. Thanks, guys.